she told me that my sister had a car accident. I'm like, is she okay? She couldn't respond, and I knew she was gone. I was greeted by the highway patrol, and he told me that both of my sisters were killed in a car wreck. A fully loaded cement truck, traveling close to 70 miles per hour, and he hit my car and just went completely over the top of it. The driver of the car admitted to looking down at her GPS. She dropped her phone. She tried to pick it up, and she hit an upcoming traffic. I could have died. I, I shouldn't be here today. We're southbound on the Gulf Freeway. I can see that she's on her phone reading messages, texting. So we're going to stop her. We're going to talk to her and uh, see exactly what's so important that she's disregarding traffic. How you doing, ma'am? Driver license? Do you have any clue why I'm stopping you? I want you to guess. Why do you think? Yes, your phone. You even knew it too, right? I'm not gonna lie to you, so I'm gonna Well, I can tell you right now, I was next to you, and you were not on a GPS. I can see the messages. Are you texting someone, or are you reading messages? Texting. You're texting? Who are you texting? I'm my friend. Say that again? My friend. Okay. The reason why I ask is because what's more important is the traffic in front of you. Yes, sir. That's where your focus needs to be. Distracted driving is really anything that takes your mind away from the driving task. So it's complicated because a lot of people don't assume that doing some small thing makes them distracted, but something as simple as changing the station on the radio, picking up your coffee mug, looking in the back seat at your kids, takes your mind away from the driving task. I think people tend to really look at distracted driving as strictly a cell phone, but it could be any number of things. It could be uh, having something to eat, playing with food, having the kids in the back seat that are gonna distract you from paying attention to the roadway. I was stationary up on the freeway working radar. A vehicle passed by speeding, initiated a traffic stop on the vehicle. I was up talking to the driver. Next thing I remember from that point, I, I was there for a couple minutes talking to him, and all of a sudden I just remember darkness. <laughs> Report 911, what's the address of your emergency? Yes, I'm on 146 on Spencer Highway. A truck just hit a police car that was pulled over. Looks like an officer is dead. Someone just hit him. Someone just hit him. It's an accident. I had no idea what had happened. I, I didn't see it. I didn't hear anything. There was no brakes, no, no warning before. Anything could be distracted driving, talking to other passengers in the car, changing the radio, but really the true triple threat is using that smartphone behind the wheel. It's becoming more of a problem as adults are generally showing their children bad habits, so do the, the children learn those same bad habits and they see that as a result of if my parents or my brothers or sisters can do it, then I'll be able to do it and be all right. All my friends and my parents. Yeah, my parents even drive distractively all the time. I think drivers underestimate how their minimal distractions can truly put their life at risk. When you go to a scene and you see a head-on collision of a beautiful young woman killed because she was putting on her makeup on the way to, on the way to work and went across and lost her life. You know that that happened for one reason only, and that's because she got into a bad habit of not uh, focusing on her driving, uh, and uh, she ended up losing her life. I'll never forget as a young CHP officer, 
seeing the sky from a distance, doing this at 7 in the morning. I was brand new. I punched my police car to get up to him. And what's this guy doing? So I don't want people to think this is a gender issue. He's shaving and doing this, looking at himself in the mirror while he's driving at 55, 60 miles an hour. It is horrific. It's done all over the place. And it's something that there's really no excuse for, because we all know that the data and the studies show it is really a, da a, a dangerous and deadly activity. Your actions can affect the people around you in the car. And that's what makes driving so scary, is because you're trusting other people to stay on the other side of a painted line. That is it, that is it. it there's a painted line on the road and you're expected to stay. That's, that painted line is not going to keep you away from another driver. It's not gonna do anything. I was with a friend and we were, um, we were watching a football game and I received a phone call from my dad and he was um, somewhere perplexed, he was concerned. He said, um, I think that your sister Brianna's dead. And I said, I mean, I was, I was in shock and I said to him, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, that was a car wreck. So we went over to their mom's house and I was greeted by the highway patrol and he told me that both of my sisters were killed in a car wreck. It changed my, my family. So, I mean, it, it was, it was um, devastating. So AAA has done some annual surveys of motorists for several years now, and one of the questions that we ask about is related to distracted driving, texting in particular. And what we find from that research is that there is this notion of do as I say, not as I do. And so we report that texting and driving is a really risky behavior. We report that seeing others on the road text and drive makes us feel uncomfortable and unsafe, yet about a third of those same people admit to doing it themselves in the last 30 days. It does take eyes off of the road, it takes hands off the steering wheel, and it takes the mind off of the task of driving. And all three of those things make texting while driving in particularly a truly deadly distracted driving activity. I received a phone call from my sister-in-law and, and she asked me if I was okay. And I'm like, yes, okay, has anybody called you? No. And she told me that my sister had a car accident. She didn't tell me anything else. I'm like, is she okay? And she couldn't, re she couldn't respond to the question. I'm like, how is she? And I knew, I knew she was gone. The first thing I did is call my brother. I didn't tell him that she was gone. I wanted, you know, I didn't know what to do. Vanessa, my baby sister, was the one that gave me the call that our, our, our other sister has have gone to, into a car wreck, into an accident, and I tried calling hospitals and, and they, they didn't know what was going on. Around 20% of drivers at any given time are engaged in some way with their phone in a way that they shouldn't be while driving. I think there's no question that distracted driving, episodes of distracted driving, crashes that involve distracted driving, and crash fatalities and injuries that result from a crash that involves a distracted driver are, are absolutely underreported. And there are a lot of good reasons for that, right? So dead drivers can't talk. Uh, people know that distracted driving is a poor choice to make. And if, even if in a fender bender, and most certainly if somebody were injured or killed in a crash, people are not uh, willing to admit that they were engaged in that behavior, especially if they live in a state where it's illegal to do so. Many times we'll never be able to actually uh, have that causative factor where we won't be able to determine the distracted driving uh, played a role, but I promise you, as bad as the data shows, as dangerous as data shows this uh, activity is, it's worse in the data because, quite frankly, sometimes we'll never be able to determine that's what, what happened. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Sergeant Bowles, Port Police Department. When you went by me there as I was pulling out the police station, it looked like you were had your head down was on a phone. No, I don't even have my phone. 
You don't have a phone? Yeah, I have my phone, but I, I know I have my phone. Okay, you didn't, put it, you didn't put it under your bag over there? Were you messing with something when you drove by? I mean, you were literally like this. Is when you it is difficult to enforce. It is frustrating. Okay. But okay. like most laws, when they're written, no um, they no, get modified as we go. Okay, gotcha. And I will certainly take the law as it stands um, over not having the law at all. Because at least it gives me an opportunity. That is a reason to stop someone and uh, give them a warning verbally or a written warning or issue a citation if I think I can prove it in court. Uh, but the very fact that we can stop people and tell them don't text and drive and then that usually follows up with the conversation is uh, again explaining it may be legal but it's not smart uh, to do anything with your phone while you're driving when you take your eyes off the road when you're using your phone when you're texting whatever it is you're doing on your phone and you're not paying attention to where you're going you look like any other intoxicated driver on a roadway with not maintaining your lane, you can't maintain your speed, you may miss a red light that you've come up to, um, something along that line. And the reality is to an officer on the street, if we're driving behind you, I can't tell the difference between you being on your phone and you being intoxicated. What's missing is the sense of personal shame. It's taken us decades to get to that point with drinking and driving. And I, and I think if, if someone found out that you were drinking and driving and you harmed someone or, you know, God forbid, um, killed someone, the shame in that, we're just not there with distracted driving. You wouldn't do that. So why do you do this? Put down your phone. Lives depend on it. Don't drive intoxicated. Don't drive intexticated. A sobering message from AAA. The initiative Don't Drive Intoxicated, Don't Drive Intexticated really is for any driver, but the message is intended for those adult drivers who consider themselves safe drivers behind the wheel. You know, the people that would say, I'd never get behind the wheel after having a few beers or having a glass of wine. Yet they don't think twice to get behind the wheel and then pick up that smartphone to send a text message or to program GPS or to send an email to, to their work. When in reality, the consequences of distracted driving could be the same as the consequences of impaired driving, crashes that end in deaths and injuries. So I was going to school in Texas State University in San Marcos and uh, it was the day we got out for spring break. I'm on a two lane road in the right-hand lane waiting on oncoming traffic so that I can make a left-hand turn into a neighborhood. And uh, behind me is a single cab truck. And like most cars do when they get tired of waiting, he goes around on the shoulder of the road, gets in back in front of me, and behind him come a fully loaded cement truck traveling close to 70 miles per hour. And he hit my car and just went completely over the top of it. And when he did, he knocked me into oncoming traffic where I was hit by a Nissan Xterra coming the other way. And it's actually hit twice. I mean, still 100% conscious. and trapped inside of a burning car fighting to get out. This guy that we just stopped uh, was on his phone as he's driving down the road, so we pull him over. His story is that he was uh, on his map trying to figure out where he's going. He's a delivery guy for, uh, for a sandwich company. But oddly enough, when I come up to the car, he doesn't have his phone in his hand anymore. He's got a PSP or a video game type console on his lap with the case all opened up. And he looks like he's trying to change out the memory cards um, as we got him pulled over. So not only is he doing something on his phone, he looks like he's playing a video game as well. Um, so which is also not legal to do in your car. My gear and stuff had gone everywhere. Um, I hit the emergency button on my radio and started asking for help. 55. Somebody just hit 655. Somebody, I need you out there at 1600 North 146. They think they struck a patrol vehicle or himself? Himself. Found out uh, when the guys started getting there, they told me I'd been hit. My vehicle had been hit. I'm calling 
I really don't know how long it took everybody to get there. I could just hear them coming. They arrived and started working on me. And the next thing I remember waking up to my wife in the hospital. The driver of the car admitted to looking down at her GPS. And she said that as she looked down, she swerved and tried to overcorrect. And at that point, she was in the path of an 18-wheeler. She was texting, driving, using her phone, going to work. And she dropped her phone. She tried to pick it up. And she hit an upcoming traffic. Which one was her car? So you can just, I guess, arrow or hit the button there to finish it. That's horrible. I mean, it's just. You know, all this could have been prevented. All this could have been pre prevented on on our side. I mean, only she would have just waited. Yeah, I'm good. And I'm also thinking about the families from the other, even though they didn't perish, just, you know, them being involved and, and, and it, it just it, it just brings so much hurt to everyone that, that's involved, not, not just us, but it, it hurts everyone. He's going 70 miles per hour through a school zone. I mean, he's not paying attention. You know, he's distracted by something, whether that's a cell phone, a cheeseburger, whatever the case may be. Clearly, you're distracted. If you're going that fast through a school zone and hit a car from behind, you're just not paying attention to what you're doing. Broke my back at T12, severed my spinal cord, had a punctured lung, a torn diaphragm, and several broken ribs. And um, that's what left me paralyzed at the waist. And that's what happened. He got a speeding ticket. That's it. Yeah. The driver had turned around to, while she's traveling on the freeway, to feed her child back seat. And she's turned around, traveling on the freeway, not looking ahead of her. There's about, from the crest of the hill to where I was, I think it's a quarter mile or so, so plenty line of sight, no reason not to have seen the flashing lights. There's an exit lane, and I was stopped in the median part of the freeway in the exit lane. She was in the exit lane. She kept traveling straight onto the shoulder where I was sitting. And then she spun around and hit me. I went up, flipped up. I was told I did a flip or two. I hit the windshield. I had a huge gash on the back of my head. They like said I left some of my hair in the windshield of her vehicle. The vehicle went up and hit me with the front, and as it was spinning, and I was coming down, it hit me again with the back of her vehicle. So I was told there were no braking. She just wasn't looking, trying to feed the baby in the back seat. They fought on her for failing to yield to an emergency vehicle. Uh, there's a part of the law that if someone's injured for it, it, it ups at a grade and I believe she received a probation for it. Okay. Oh, that's, that's really it. Not, not much. 
So obviously strong laws that are enforceable are important, but laws alone aren't going to solve this problem. Uh, consumer education is important, but consumer education by itself isn't going to solve the problem. Uh, and I also think that technology got us into this problem, and technology is probably going to have to play a role in getting us out of this mess. And so some combination of those factors, I think, in the end is what's really going to you know, help us turn a corner when it comes to driver distraction. Everybody knows from a young kid all the way to adults and older people that it's dangerous. And so when you see people getting injured or killed from something that we all know shouldn't be done, uh, it does irritate you because it's very preventable. Anytime I see someone nowadays go to reach the phone while they're driving or something, I say something. It, it does, it scares you. It makes you angry, you know? I mean, it's, uh, I, I get it. We're driving down the road, your phone goes off, your first reaction is to reach for your phone. That's a pretty irresponsible thing to do. When you do that, what you're saying is your time, your life matters more than everybody else's. And I think that level of personal responsibility, maybe from a positive standpoint, and embracing it that way, but public shame, saying, God, you know, I don't want anybody to know I was distracted driving. Um, driving distracted, I just, I don't think we're there yet, and that's what it's gonna take. You can't really sum it up, but I would tell people to, you know, be careful, to make sure that they are exercising safe habits, because like our family, I mean, you too could lose family members could have changed everything. I mean, it did change my life right there with that injury. I've got three kids and a wife. I could have died. I, I shouldn't be here today. People have always said, well, time heals. I, I, don't, I don't see it. Because we still, we still cry. We still think about her. We just move on.